Hello students, today we will discuss the semiconductor physics. So before going to the semiconductor physics, we have to know what is the origin of energy bands in solid materials. So in a solid material, an isolated atom possesses discrete energies of different electrons. So let us suppose two isolated atoms are brought to very close proximity. Then the electrons in the orbits of two atoms interact with each other. So that in the combined system, the energies of electrons will be will not be in the same level, but changes and energies will be slightly lower and larger than the original value. So at the place of each energy level, a closely spaced two energy levels exist. That means in any atom, in any solid, if there are n number of atoms are present and they are brought together to form a solid and the, if these atoms, electrons interact, then there will be n number of closely spaced energy levels in the place of discrete energy levels and it is known as bands of allowed energies. The width of the allowed energy band depends on the degree of overlapping of electrons of at the adjacent atoms and it is largest for outermost electrons. The band corresponding to outermost orbits is called conduction band and the next inner band is called valence band. The gap between these two allowed bands is called forbidden energy gap or band gap that is called EG. So in this picture, the left hand side, this is a picture of individual atom whereas in the right side, we know that in the crystalline solids, there, 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 is, there are around 10 to the power 23 number of atoms are present. So, if one individual atom is considered, then the 1s, 2s, 2p, they are the discrete energy levels or states. Whereas, in the crystalline solid, there are n number of atoms or around 10 to the power 23 number of atoms. So, there will be the ranges of energy levels or energy bands corresponding to 1s, 2s, 2p states, etc. Now, we will come to the difference between insulators, semiconductors and metals. So, depending upon the distance of the conduction band and the valence band, there are three types of materials, all of you know. That in the insulator, the distance between valence band and conduction band is very high. It is greater than 5 or 6 eV, the band gap. So, in the insulator, there is no such free electrons to conduct electricity. Whereas in the semiconductor materials, the band gap between conduction band and valence band, this is around 1.1 eV for silicon, germanium for 0.67 eV and the gallium arsenide material, the band gap is around 1.41 eV at room temperature. Whereas for metals, there is a overlapping of Conduction band and valence band, there, there is no such band gap. That is why the electron, the conductors or metals are good electrical and thermal conductors. So, difference in conductivity, the insulators have electrical conductivity 10 to the minus 18 ohm inverse, meter inverse, whereas semiconductors have a range of sigma conductivity value that is 10 to the minus 8 ohm inverse, meter inverse to 10 to the minus 3 ohm inverse meter inverse and the conductors they have they have high conductivity that is 10 to the power 18 ohm inverse meter inverse. Now we will come to the semiconductor physics that there are two types of semiconductor one is pure or intrinsic semiconductor and another is extrinsic or impure semiconductors. So ex extrinsic semiconductor they are divided into two parts. One is n-type material where the pentavalent impurity material that is phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, etc. were doped in the semiconductor 
and the p-type material that means the trivalent impurity such as gallium boron indium aluminium they are doped in the semiconductor so in the n-type material the majority carriers are electrons and for the p-type the majority current charge carriers are holes now we will come to the intrinsic semiconductor so this is a silicon uh, material silicon semiconductor and silicon has four electrons and they have uh, four electrons and they are uh, their bonding is covalent bonding so at t equal to 0 all the electrons are bound in covalent bonds no charge carriers available for conduction whereas so a pure semiconductor is called intrinsic semiconductor here no free electrons are available since all the covalent bonds are complete at absolute zero temperature there is a vacant conduction band hence at zero kelvin the electrical conduction band the conduction is not possible so a pure semiconductor behaves like an insulator at 0k absolute temperature absolute zero temperature so when an electric field is applied to a intrinsic semiconductor at a temperature greater than 0k the conduction electrons move to the anode and the holes move to the cathode so what is hole an empty state in the valence band is referred to as a hole so the Conduction electrons move to the anode when a battery or electric field is applied and the holes move to the cathode. Hence, semiconductor current consists of movement of electrons and holes in opposite direction. Now, in intrinsic semiconductors, current flows due to the motion of free electrons as well as hole. The total current is sum of the electron current that is I E and due to the thermally generated electrons and the whole current I H. So uh, total current I is equal to I E plus I H. So I have already discussed that an intrinsic or pure semiconductor behaves like insulator at T equal to 0 Kelvin. And at T greater than 0K, the thermally generated electron pairs, they can participate in electrical conduction. So for an intrinsic or pure semiconductor at finite temperature, the probability of electrons to exist, exit, exist in conduction band decreases exponentially with the increasing band gap. That is the N is equal to the concentration is equal charge carrier concentration is equal to n0 e to the power minus eg by 2 kt eg is the energy band gap k is the Boltzmann constant now we will come to another concept that is the recombination of electrons and holes in the semiconductor so recombination is the process in which the free electrons in the conduction band jump into the valence band to combine with holes the rate of recombination is approximately proportion proportional to the product of electron concentration and hole concentration. So in the recombination process, the minimum energy released in the form of electromagnetic radiation is equal to the band gap Eg. That means if the nu is the frequency of emitted electromagnetic radiation, then uh, you know that Eg band gap is equal to H nu. H is the Planck's constant and the wavelength of the radiation is given by Lambda is equal to C by nu or H C by Eg and C is the velocity of light in free space. Now look at this picture. This is a picture of generation and recombination of electrons and holes. That means while the some electron hole pairs are lost by recombination, new pairs are generated due to thermal excitation at T greater than zero. So for it Pure semiconductor at a constant temperature, the rate of recombination and the rate of generation of electron hole pairs are equal, equal, so that the electron and the hole concentration remains constant at their thermal equilibrium value. If the temperature of the semiconductor increases, the thermal equilibrium value of the electron and hole concentration also 
increases. Now what is exciton? So an electron and a hole can behave as a pair bound to each other by Coulomb force of electrostatic attraction between them. Such a bound pair is referred to as exciton. And an exciton is electrically neutral so it doesn't take part in electrical conduction. Now we will come to the extrinsic or impure semiconductor. So the conductivity of the semiconductors can be greatly modified or improved by introducing a small number of suitable replacement atoms called impurities. So the process of adding impure atoms to a pure semiconductor is called doping. Usually only one atom in 10 to the power 7 or 10 to the power 8 now is replaced by a dopant atom in the doped semiconductor. And uh, an extrinsic semiconductor can be further classified by in P type and N type. So in the semiconductor that has added trivalent impurities that is aluminium, gallium, boron, indium etc. It is called P type semiconductor and N type semiconductor. Pentavalent impurities are added such as phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, bismuth and so on. So what is N type semiconductor? So pentavalent atoms uh, that means the antimony uh, or phosphorus can be added in silicon or germanium. So there will be an increase of free electrons. So extra electrons becomes a conduction electrons because it is not attached to any atom. So number of conduction electrons can be controlled by the number of impurity atoms. And the pentavalent atom gives up an electron that is why they are donor atom. And in these anti materials the electrons are majority carriers and holes are the minority, minority carriers. And for P-type semiconductor, trivalent atoms such as boron, aluminium are added to silicon or germanium to create a deficiency of electrons or we can create hole charges. The holes are created by doping process. The number of holes in this P-type semiconductor can be controlled by the number of trivalent impurity atoms and they called acceptor ions, acceptor atom and current carriers. In this p-type, the holes are the majority carriers and electrons are the minority carriers. Now, what is mass action law? So, under equili thermal equilibrium, the product of the free electron concentration that is N and the hole concentration P is a constant and it is equal to the Ni square, where Ni is the Ni is the intrinsic carrier concentration and it is a function of temperature. So this is known as mass action law. When N is increased, N or P is increased by addition of impurities, the corresponding P or N must decrease to make the product NP is constant equal to Ni square at a particular temperature. Now, what is the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors? So, intrinsic semiconductor, it is a pure semiconductor whereas the extrinsic semiconductor is impure semiconductor. The density of electrons in intrinsic semiconductor is equal to the density of holes whereas in extrinsic or impure semiconductor, the density of electrons is not equal to the density of holes. In a pure semiconductor, electrical conductivity is low, whereas for extrinsic semiconductor, electron conductivity is high. In, 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 in pure semiconductor, the dependence, uh, it can depend only on temperature, whereas the, for the extrinsic semiconductor, the electrical conductivity is depending on temperature as well as on amount of impurity. So in pure semiconductor, there is no impurities, whereas for extrinsic semiconductor, there will be trivalent or pentavalent impurity. Now, in this slide, 
we will discuss how the band diagram density of states permeability of distribution and the carrier concentration at thermal equilibrium can be uh, picturized okay so for intrinsic semiconductor the fermi level or ef fermi energy must lie at the middle of the band gap that means there is a eb is corresponding to the valence band ec is corresponding to the conduction band and the ef fermi energy lies in between at the middle of the band gap and the second figure the density of states is proportional to the root e root over of energy so the uh, density of states that is any is looks like in this manner and the fermi dirac distribution function it is lower, it is around the fermi energy it looks like in this manner and in the intrinsic semiconductor pure semiconductor the electron and hole concentrations are same so at the conduction uh, band there is a there is a electron charge carrier concentration and in the ev region there is a hole concentration now for n type semiconductors the fermi energy level lies near near with the conduction band and the charge density of states are looks like similar but whereas the fermi dirac distribution function it is shifted towards the conduction band and the electron carrier concentration is higher at the conduction band level because in n type the electrons are majority carriers whereas for p type semiconductors the fermi level or fermi energy level lies near with the valence band it is nearer to the valence band that is ev and the fermi dirac distribution function is changes changes accordingly and the hole concentration is greater with respect to the electron concentration and it is pictureized or depicted in the last figure now what is the summary of the semiconductor physics or semiconductor materials that for the intrinsic material the fermi energy level lies in the at the middle of the conduction and valence band and there is the ni is the ni and pi is the carrier concentrations of n, n type or p type material respectively and for n type material the fermi energy level lies nearer to the conduction band whereas for the p type material the fermi energy lies nearer to the valence band and n0 and p0 is the charge carrier concentration for electron and proton uh, electron and uh, holes and n0 into p0 that is equal to ni square ni is the carrier concentration for intrinsic semiconductor so thank you that is all for semiconductor